Welcome back to Me Made May on Champagne Twist. I'm Elle and this is an overview of all my makes and wares during the month of May 2018. Starting off with the pledge. was made from half a metre of floral print viscose a purchase from last year's Great British Sewing Bee Live. A simple and quick make, this scarf helped me get out of the sewing rut. Now I have a basic accessory ready for autumn. Not bad from a bargain bucket find. Japan Cross was the source of my new tote bag which had its first outing on May 2nd. Made with a beautiful charm pack of 45 inch squares, I patchworked the squares together to form the bag outer. I used leftover wadding and scrap fabric from another project to make the lining. When making this bag, I had the opportunity to practice my seam matching skills as well as my blanket stitch sewing. This very roomy bag held all my grocery shopping items without the need for me to purchase any plastic bags. bag my mum purchased absolutely eons ago. I believe the bag is made from bamboo and reminds me of the Cart Gaia bag in a more box-like shape. The actual make is a bag lining made with cotton fabric from my stash and recycled ribbon. I worked out that the entire cost of this project is about two pounds. I have since seen a similar bag sold at Zara's, but I'd just like to mention that my mum got there first. Thanks mum! Friday the 4th, otherwise known as Star Wars Day, and I initially planned to make a Chanel inspired tweed skirt. Whilst I was looking for a suitable pattern, I discovered this old skirt which I had initially planned to turn into a bag. Finding the skirt again sparked the idea to trace the component parts of the skirt onto Swiss paper, lengthening it and then using that pattern as a basis for the tweed skirt. I then sewed the bottom of the original skirt using the waistband for handles and a button closure tab and voila! A new bag and a skirt pattern, two in one. And by sheer coincidence, my new bag coordinates with my new scarf. I was very proud of my poppy dressmate, but felt there was something missing. So after spending half an hour researching the internet, I decided to make a sash belt to improve the waist definition of the dress. By midday, I had completed the task, and here it is. On Sunday, I refashioned an old top I had in the mending box for quite a while. This sleeveless top was always a little short for my taste, so I took advantage of the numerous pleats and removed them. Here's a quick tip, when using a seam ripper, make sure the red nodule is facing downwards. This is the correct way to use a seam ripper, ensuring more control and accuracy when removing stitching. It also reduces the risk of damaging the surrounding fabric. I later decided to remove the pleats on the bodice as well, 
So now, instead of an unusable short top, I have a great summer through autumn camisole. As I mentioned, this has been a busy week and I wanted to wear something fun around the house. Here is my cunning plan self-designed skirt. On Tuesday, I finally started working on my tweed skirt. I'm using an old skirt as a basis of a pattern and I hope to create a wrap over skirt with button closure detail. I use Swiss tracing paper drawing the outline from the old skirt to transfer it onto the new fabric. The next day I continued on with my tweed skirt project, finally cutting out the fabric. I also decided upon which lining I was going to use and, as an added detail, some bias bind trimming. My self-made bias binding corresponds with the colour detailed in the tweed fabric. There's still a long way to go, but here's a sneak preview of how the skirt looks so far. Grocery shopping day and I took one of my favourite totes. The material for this bag was sourced from the bargain bucket at the furnishing section at the John Lewis store on Oxford Street. The main fabric is actually from a sample curtain. Friday was spent pottering around in the garden, so on with my trusty apron. Made with Kath Kisten fabric and tied with some satin ribbon, this quick and simple make has become a useful item when carrying out chores. A day out to Walpole Park for a decorative wallpaper painting workshop. So no chance of me wearing my sartorial finery, but the chance to use my skirt to tote bag from last week. And very handy it came in too, as I was able to carry my work of art and raspberry canes from a plant cell on the grounds. A Sunday stroll through Columbia Row Flower Market and I took with me my trusty handmade shopper made from a classic print Kath Kisden cotton duck fabric. Featuring not less than three roomy exterior pockets, this little gem has seen me through lots of garden shows, grocery shopping and has even travelled abroad several times and it's still going strong. Monday and spring has well and truly sprung. So here is my handmade skirt I wore in celebration of the season. Is it too early to mention Christmas? I spent today sewing up some charm packs in preparation for some useful Christmas items. More on this later. Still on the theme of patchworking, the continual review of my fabric stash has unearthed a number of gems, including these cast kissed and remnants. To hand, I had some red ribbon which luckily matched the red rose print, so I decided to make a small book tote with the useful patchwork exterior pocket. From start to finish, to make the bag took less than two hours. The bag is fully lined with cotton, and so together with the cotton duck fabric, the bag should be robust and last a long time. The theme of spring is evident again, as I wore my floral print skirts I made last year. A simple gathered design with inseam pockets. I really enjoy wearing this skirt. Back to work on my tweed skirt. Taking inspiration from last year's Great British Sewing Bee show, I decided to make self-covered buttons for my skirt. I searched high and low for buttons that I thought that would work with this skirt 
and then decided best to keep it simple. I don't know why, but I woke up on Saturday thinking there may be an important event happening today. Did your invite get lost in the post too? In spite of this, I still had a lovely day with family and friends as we got together and dressed up pretending we were VIPs at Meghan's and Harry's Big Do. So, out came the bunting and a dress I made last year. Teamed with a navy blue jacket and coordinating hat and clutch, I was off to the best garden party in town. What a wedding, and what a dress, and what an evening dress. I now have new sewing goals. As I mentioned in my week three Me Made May video, I wore my Easter parade dress I made last year, while my friends, family and I pretended to be VIP guests at the royal wedding. As footage was released featuring Meghan's evening reception dress, it occurred to me that I don't actually have a homemade evening dress of my own. So I thought I'd showcase for today a dress I had adapted, which I think I could carry off in case my invite finally arrives. This plain black prom style dress is actually a bargain bucket find I found a few years ago from Coast, has been updated by sewing on fabric flowers taken from a couple of headbands I purchased from Accessorize. I simply stitched on the flowers at the waistline Okay, it's not an evening gown, but I reckon I could bust a few moves on the dance floor. Especially if I'd received my lost invite, but never mind, eh? As the weather forecasts a beautiful sunny day, I thought it'd be a good idea to wear my Daisy Meadow dress. This is the famous McCall's 2 triple four Project One Ray pattern, which I have used several times almost to the point of exhaustion. Here is my trusty, and now getting a bit old, polka dot simple gathered skirt. As one of my favourite me made pieces, I like teaming the skirt with bright colours such as a plain white top and this orchid cardigan. More on the cardigan later. Previously, I mentioned my Christmas patchwork project and this is the reason why I was doing it. I wanted to make some storage bags for all the Christmas decorations. This project has provided me with the opportunity to practice my patchworking skills as well as use up some old scraps. I also wanted to store my Christmas decorations in something a little more interesting than an old cardboard box. Sadly, this has become my first casualty of my self-imposed fabric buying ban. I would like to line these bags. Unfortunately, I haven't got enough lining fabric left, so I'm going to have to wait until I can buy some. Ooh. You know summer is coming when I dig up this old top. It was actually a dress which I purchased from, I think it was Dorothy Perkins. Um, the dress was way too short for me, so I chopped off the bottom and made it into a scarf. And as you can see, I'm wearing it with my orchid cardigan. Ever since Daisy Lowe was photographed wearing this gingham dress, I've wanted to make one of my own. It's taken me a while, I've had the fabric cut out for a long time, but there's nothing like me made me to get me into action. It only took me a day to actually make up the skirt, and it will be another couple of days before I can hem the skirt, as I have to let it hang for that amount of time. The skirt lining was actually recycled from an old skirt. So with a little bit of luck, unlike the Christmas bags, I hopefully will get this finished by the end of the month. 
Another UFO for at least this week is a pink, black and grey tweed skirt I'm currently working on. I'm not very happy with my pattern matching, but as this is the first time I've used tweed in a pieced skirt, it's not too bad and practice makes perfect. However, I'm very pleased with my invisible zip insertion. Here's a sneak peek of the skirt back. Further progress on the skirt coming up. First, I finally completed the red gingham circle skirt. Hand sewing a full circle skirt hem is a very long process, which is probably why this project became a UFO. But I now have a skirt that can be paired with several tops in my wardrobe and has now become another item ticked off my UFO list. Incidentally, the zip closure is finished with a wooden button from my stash. Recently losing weight meant that the waistband of my Henley skirt needed to be shortened. Sadly, this meant the loss of the double box pleat at the front of the skirt to be replaced by a single central pleat. I now have a wearable skirt and I can finally start work next month on the co top. I hardly ever use the embroidery stitches on my sewing machine. This skirt, which was started last year, changed that. Here you can see the tulip design on the facing. It adds an extra fun little note on a great daisy print A-line skirt so expect to see more machine embroidery on future projects. I'm also very pleased with my pattern matching along the invisible zip opening. I think this skirt goes well with my floral lace top, so I'm pleased to say that's another project completed. The following two projects are still works in progress due to running out of materials. The pink grey check tweed skirt is almost complete, save for the hem. Unfortunately, I ran out of bias binding, but you can see here the progress I've made. The pattern is actually from the Cloths Kit's Big Birdie Skirt Kit and has proved to be a very useful staple for my wardrobe. This Jaeger skirt was dismantled and its pieces were traced to form the basis of the pattern for my other tweed skirt. Inspired by these 1960s style tailored jacket, I made my own self-covered buttons and added them to the design. Again, as in the previous tweed skirt, I have to complete the hem, but progress is being made and I'm pretty pleased with it so far. And now for the last item of Mead Made May, and it happens to be a pin cushion, a big one. Measuring 25 centimeters by 20 centimeters, I've wanted a big pin cushion for a long time and had actually cut out the pieces ages ago. From sewing the pieces together to finishing off with a bow, it took me all of 20 minutes. Now I'm wondering how I ever managed without such a large pin cushion. Seriously, if you ever get the chance, make the biggest pin cushion you can. It will just save you so much time and aggravation. So, that was my Me Made May for 2018. I hope you enjoyed this overview. Thanks so much for watching. For more of my sewing and other crafting antics throughout the rest of 2018 and beyond, stay tuned to Champagne Twist. Bye for now.